Hello Topatters, Simon Mas here. In September 2022, YouTube announced Creator Music, a service that allows creators to use copyrighted music in their videos. It looks like a great step forward for anyone, right? I'm a bit dubious. It depends on what music will be available. I couldn't find who negotiated this deal with YouTube. I also couldn't find any info on how I, a music copyright holder, can submit my work to YouTube to be included in the Creator Music program. Am I too eager? After all, everything will be clear in due course. It's so good. When someone tells me it's all good, I instinctively check if my fly is open. Timing can make a significant difference on any sales performance. Try selling a Halloween costume in July, for example. Songwriters are salespeople. They sell their music to someone else, in this case, to YouTube creators. If people open creator music and all they find is my three albums, I'm gonna make some extra money, regardless of how good or bad my music is. If instead people find all the classic rock, the jazz standards, the hits and so on, and then later my albums are added to the mix, it's very unlikely that I will see a penny from this revolution, regardless of how good or bad my music is. With that point out of the way, let's move to a deeper, subconscious issue. The first thing I thought when I heard the YouTube news was not, wow, a new way to monetize my own music, but so people can put a Beatles track in their videos now? Let's face it, that's what people want. Not just music, but classic hits, classic artists, because that's the best. That's being achieved as a side effect of major labels merging. When 10 to 20 big labels release albums, a lot of new music comes out. If you have three, there's a lot less new music, and a lot more concentration of old catalogues in fewer hands. That means traditional networks just play their music. Taking on new artists is riskier than placing, say, Pink Floyd's money once again. So new artists are now fully independent for the most part, and for most people, that means that nobody cares about their music enough to handle them a recording contract. I couldn't find recent data about releases by major labels. There's a 2011 Billboard article that I have linked in the episode description. Nothing else I can show you. On the other hand, there's another article in the description. The title says it all. Over 73% of US music market is now claimed by catalog records rather than new releases. Like I said, it's all about old music, not just music. Let's go back to copyright and YouTube. With the new millennium, major labels punished any use of their music on the internet, regardless of fair use, regardless of common sense, sometimes even regardless of whether said music had actually been used. The natural effect was to create an environment where fair use is under attack. Now, thanks to Creator Music, it looks like you will be able to put, say, Dear Prudence as a background in your video. That's honestly great. It is less great that the obvious next step will be to get rid of fair use on YouTube altogether. And the stroke of genius is that it will not be YouTube to do that. We, the creators, will. Imagine. You created a video, you told us the story of Stairway to Heaven. You have used 10 seconds of the song in a 30-minute video. Do you want to demonetize the video and or risk a copyright strike? I've heard it tends to happen with Led Zeppelin. Wouldn't it be better to just share the future revenue with them or pay them a flat fee? That way, you are sure your video will never have any problem. In other words, Will you treasure the upholding of fair use more than your peace of mind, your future revenues, and the efforts you put in your video? I thought so. Time to wrap things up then. Does copyright work? Is it fair? I think it works. 
it can be improved, but it works. What does not work at all is how the copyright law can and sometimes is abused by some copyright holders. In time, this has created an environment that disincentivizes the creation of new music, that annihilates any dialogue between old ideas and new ones, that makes small creators worse off and listeners prisoner of the same old musical landscape. In this sense, copyright has failed us all. See you soon with more music-related content. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye-bye! Simon Mas, music you love.